YouTube. So I'm here today to talk about all the books I read in May, except for the first week of May, funny enough, because I had intended to do weekly wrap-ups of all the books I read, but of course that didn't happen. So these are all like the last three weeks in May that I've read, and I read a whole assortment um, of books. I know it's going to go in order in, in which I read them. So the first one is A Feeling um, for Books by Janice A. Radway. And this is the Book of the Month Club, Literary Taste, and Middle Class Desire. And um, I I heard about this book. Well, this book was on my radar because it's a book about books. And um, I was intrigued by it. I've never um, subscribed to the Book of the Month Club, but I've seen, like, here on BookTube, people doing, like, unboxings or, like, hauls of Book of the Month uh, books, selections. And I've, I don't know, I've been interested, but I've never really had a big desire to, to, to really to subscribe to any kind of bookish box or anything like that um but I was interested in this book and this um isn't really current day this is back in like the 80s or 90s so I mean it does, it does have some relevancy but you know not not, not currently what's happening but this book takes place um when uh there's been a, there's going to be a shift in the book of month club and how they're run like they were being um maybe like bought out or like a new CEO CEO was coming in and had like a a whole new way that they wanted to run the business and so um, the author um, interviews and sits down and watches the um, people like she really mainly focuses on um, the people who discuss and make decisions on what books in particular are selected and how they get selected which was which is really interesting but unfortunately eh, the book overall felt kind of dry and just dull in a way, which is not what I wanted to read, so I didn't enjoy it as much as I would have liked to. But maybe for people who like really follow like religiously the Book of the Month Club, then this one might be good for you. Um, then I have some the folder here to my this is all out of order, my, my little picture here. Okay. So then I have some physical books that I read. This is The Soft House Frontier by Everett Dick. And this is like an old book I found at Powell's one day. And I was interested in it because of reading um, about like the like the frontier life of you know like digging out the houses to live like basically in the dirt we'll see like the dirt roof and the dirt floor and like the the, the Saudis um, and so this really caught my eye and there it's full of pictures and maps Let's see if I can find some pictures here oh this one's kind of scary with people with masks on their face <laughs> um, they kind of look like the KKK but in a way um, that, that's not in here but um, and here's some pictures here. So this goes chapter by chapter on all the like the different historical data about living on the frontier. So there's a whole chapter. Let's go ahead and read some of the chapter titles for you so you can give you an idea of what is included. If I can find it here. Okay, so we have um, westward westward ho, like you know when they're making the great wave from the east coast through the, um, the frontier, um, like town building mania, um, river cities, um, log cabins, financing, uh, ranching, soft house homesteading, um, cattlemen, um, the whites and Indians, uh, nature frowns on mankind, so like all the storms and stuff that they have to deal with and plagues. Um, so yeah, it goes through all sorts of um, things here, which was very informative, but um, I... Did not love it. By the end of this book, I did not like the author at all. When he talked about black people, he referred to them as darkies. When he was um, got to the the chapter on women, um, he was um, he mentioned that you know all and he like broad strokes said all women um, were made nervous and scared of the winds um, on the plains. And I mean, I'm sure that's the case for some women you know, who were like isolated and um, like you know that kind of like wore on their nerves, but not all of them, and uh, and then uh, when he was talking about um, the Native Americans, um, he referred to them as primitive people. Um, so so yes, yeah, so the information here was good, but I, I really can't recommend this book just because of all the racism that that's in here. <laughs> and this was written in like the mid fifties, um, so I, I don't know. I think like, especially like calling Native Americans of people and black people darkies that was past I mean that was you know before the 1950s but in a way there was that one um, then the other physical book I read was can you keep a secret by Sophie Kinsella 
this is a book I found at a little free library and um, like the pink cover caught my eye and I read this I don't know like 10 years ago or so and so I haven't read it since and I haven't read any Sophie Kinsella in a long long time but I remember enjoying her way back when and so I picked this one up and this is about what's her name um uh, let's see Emma and she is on a plane um, going to make a pitch um, for her business and um, she gets really scared because the plane she doesn't like flying in general but then the plane uh, hits turbulence and so it's like rocking around and she thinks she's gonna die and so she's been drinking this whole time because she's nervous on the flight and um, so she spills all of the, her secrets to the person sitting beside her and then when she comes back to town come to find out that um, the person that she spilled all her secrets to um, is her her their CEO and so he knows all about um, you know who she is and so she's trying to make her way up in the business she's like a lowly some kind of secretary and so she wants to you know work her way up and so like that's not exactly gonna happen with um, with him knowing all this but um, he, he at first he kind of uses it against her in a way like making little snide comments but um, they, you know, they form a friendship and a relationship and and so on um, but I like that part, the beginning part was like funny, but then I don't know. I didn't really enjoy like the midway point all the way to the end. It just dragged for me. And I, I mean, I reread many, many books before, and it's not the case of me rereading the book that's the issue, like me knowing the ending. It's just, yeah, I don't know. It just did not hold my interest for some reason. Okay, and then I have um, switching gears like kind of completely in a way. Uh, Janet Cam needs a date for the dance by Eve Bunting. And this is another, actually, another free library book that I found. And I just love the cover here. I've already, I've, like, redonated it to uh, my little free library. Also, I don't have a copy myself. But um, the cover, I just really like. It has, like, the 80s or 90s um, kind of look there. And so this is about a, a girl named Janet who um, all of her friends have dates to the dance. Um, I think it's a seventh grade dance. But she doesn't. And so she makes up a pretend boyfriend. Um, so that she doesn't look so bad, and so now she's kind of like put, she put herself in a spot, because now she really has to do, you know, like ask a guy to the dance, and um, it kind of like takes it, takes it from there. It's like a really short book, I think 100 pages or so, but just the emotion involved in this book, I, I really appreciated the author um, for that, because um, within 100 pages or so, like just, it just brought me back to like those middle school days where like you like your friends, but they can be catty, and like hold stuff against you and like you know that whole like drama of like you know especially when you're adding boys to the mix and you know some of your friends are you know wearing new clothes and, and like, in, are interested in different things than you were you know the, the year before so yeah I, I really actually um, I was really surprised um, how much I like this one then I have one shot at forever a small town an unlucky unlikely coach and a magical baseball season by Chris Ballard and um, I heard about this one on Steve Donahue's channel and I am not a huge fan of baseball. I've watched a couple games here and there, but I don't follow any teams. I don't really know. I don't really know that much about it. But I was intrigued about it. It's like you know, like the spring summer season right now, and it's like you know, baseball baseball season. And so I was like, oh, let me let me give this a shot. And it was it was really really good. Like I was like following you know, at, um, as the as the um, some of the games were um, told in the chapters. I'm like you know what was happening. Yes, I'm like. Are they, are they gonna make that hit? Are they gonna get a home run? Are they gonna score? You know, so yeah, that was like kind of surprising because I'm not a sports person at all, really. Um, <laughs> but, it, but it was really good. It's the uh, the coach that was brought in for this high school team. It's like small town Illinois, and um, he was very different from all the coaches they had in the past. Like um, on this team, like they have not been a very successful baseball team, and they're not really expected to have any success. But um, there's like they bring in this like hippie kind of guy with like the long hair, and so he even says like when he takes over the team, like you know practice, you know that's optional, you know show up if you want to show up. So he kind of like like really lax rules in a way, but it worked because he really cared about um, about the team. You know he really put in the effort to get to know them and like befriend them, and so they, you know they they got success way beyond what what they thought ever could happen, and so it was just really cool. To read about and so yeah if you like baseball even if you don't like baseball because I don't really like it that much it was a, just a really good story um, overall then I have Miss Julia speaks her mind by Anne Andy Ross and I heard about this series from Lizzie Faye loves books um, channel I believe it yeah that's where I heard it from 
And um, this is about Julia, who um, she is living in like small town North Carolina. And um, so yeah, I, I just really loved their um, the author's like use of like language, like I declare and things like like little phrases like that. I, I just really enjoyed seeing because like, that's how like my my grandmother um, used to talk. And so it was just kind of nice, like in a way, like revisiting my grandmother, <laughs> kind of. Um, but uh, so Miss Julia, she is. Um, kind of like re fairly recently widowed, and so she is now taking control of her life because up until this point, her husband made all the decisions. He, you know, gave her money um, to spend when she needed it, but you know, kind of, you know, budgeted it out so she didn't really have much voice in things. So now she's on her own. And then, um, come to find out, one day, um, this strange woman and little boy show up at her doorstep and, um, like, hey. Um, I'm your husband's like mistress and you know, here's the child from our relationship and I have to go run now. I, ha I need to um, go to a school, to like a cosmo uh, cosmetology school um, to, you know, be successful now because you know, like the husband died. So, you know, he was also um, the mistress's um, financial backer as well. And so like, she, like but neither one of the women were independent. So it's like now she needs to um, take control, control of her life as well. So like, oh, hey. You know, um, sorry for the short notice and the surprise here, but, you know, here's this little boy. I got to run. I'll see you later. And she's like, you know, what is happening? And so, um, like, Julia um, kind of like begrud begrudgingly, like, oh, of course, who, who, you know, that's totally expected. He takes care of this little boy and, like, starts to like him. And, and then, like, then they come to, like, she comes to realize, like, uh, when she tries to contact the mother again, um, like, you know, hey, I, I can't. Can't, I can't babysit and watch this boy forever. Like you need to come back and take care of your son. And um, but then she realizes something is going on, something mysterious, uh, because she can't get a hold of her. And the school like never enrolls her, the the woman. And so this whole like she, so then Julia takes it upon herself to solve the mystery on what exactly is happening with this woman. And uh, so yeah, I I, I really liked it. Um, then I have kind of like a depressing book, uh, Cattail, The Wild Weird Battle to Save the Florida Panther by Craig Pittman. And I listened to this on audiobook. Um, this is about um, panthers that um, are living in Florida. And like, it's like, kind of like a, a sad picture here. Cause it, it, is a, it is like a sad story of um, them just like struggling to, sur to survive with um, like their habitats and their, you know, their food sources um, and like having to deal with humans and all that, like all that being so limited. Um, but yeah, um, I listen like I said, I listen to an audiobook, and I swear every time I listen to an audio audiobook this year, I have not enjoyed the experience. I really need to drop audiobooks. I think completely. Um, this is the last audiobook I've listened to, and I don't think I'm gonna listen to any more. I just want to like physically read them. Um, <laughs> but I did enjoy this book. It's a sad, sad story. But if you want to learn about panthers or like the Florida wildlife, then then yeah, this would this would be a really good one. Um, I then have Tricky Twenty Two by Janet Ivanovich. And this is not a good book. <laughs> like I mentioned on my Ask Steve Reddit uh, um, video, that um, I know full well that these are not well written. They're, the characters are very, it's like very slim plot, plot and like flat characters and all that. But um, I've been reading these like well over a decade now. And um, yeah, I just, I just really, <laughs> I enjoy them when I want to laugh or just like some very, very light reading. Um, this is following. Um, Stephanie Plum, who is a bounty hunter, um, <laughs> she's not that good at it, but she's still sticking at, um, sticking with this job, like 22, 22 books in, and um, she gets, um, she goes to a, um, she's going to a college campus to investigate and find someone who skipped bail, and um, so there's a whole like mystery there ensues of her like um, meeting and encountering um, like college students and professors um, as well, and then it looks like a little slight side plot of her on again off again boyfriend who dumps her all the, like out of the blue and he's like he says something like you get you're, you're giving me um like stomach uh acid reflux or something like that and he's like I, I can't handle this anymore you're 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 you know putting my nerves to, to work too much or stressing me out <laughs> so he's like yeah I, I can't see you anymore um so yeah there's a little plus there but uh, you know they're gonna get back again get together I'm sure because you know, again on again off again for 22 books now um I then have hail to the Hell to the Chef, I'm going to say Chief, but Hell to the Chef by Julia Heisey, Julie, Julie Heisey, and this is the second book in, is it saying the name, the White House Chef Mystery Series, and this is following, I can't remember her name, 
but the main character is now like the head chef uh, at the White House, and um, they are getting ready for a Christmas um, fiesta. And um, while they're preparing all this food, her like longtime like friend and acquaintance, um, who's an electrician for the White House, like he's like very experienced and he's like a master electrician. Um, he's working one day and it gets electrocuted, and like the circumstances. And how he gets electrocuted is like very um, questionable, like she thinks, be, or suspicious, because um, like if he's this experienced, like how how did this happen? Because like he was working on like a hot wire, like it wasn't turned off when he was working on these cables, and so everyone else in the, that's um, dealing with this and knows about it just completely brushes her off, like you know this was just a complete accident, and um, you know I know it's really sad, but you know stop hanging up on this, but she is. Just very, you know, she keeps pushing the idea, and so um, she gets there's a lot of pushback, especially from the other electricians that you, know, you think would want to help and like prevent anyone else from getting electrocuted. But um, but comes out, you know, comes to find out, you know, she's right, and there is a whole um, uh, I don't know, like assassination plot <laughs> going on here, and um, yeah, <laughs> the Christmas um, festival really comes into play um, towards the end, and so yeah, I, I really like this series. It's very different because I um, read a couple um, like bakery or like cooking cozy mysteries, but this you know has the like not the, not the political side of the White House, but a different aspect comes in play with like serious um, you know criminals are in like a cozy mystery like you don't typically see, but it's still a cozy mystery. And so yeah, I, I really liked it. Um, I then have the newcomer by Mary Kay Andrews. And, um, I, I really like, uh, Mary Kay Andrews. I, I read it like one or two every summer and I have for a long time. And this is her newest book. Um, it's following a woman who is coming, um, it's like on the run from New Jersey or no, New York down to Florida because she sees, um, a little paper that's like, has like a little, um, ad for a motel in Florida. And so she goes down there because she just witnessed, not witnessed, but she found her sister dead. And in her apartment, and so um, she takes she takes the little girl because um, she was instructed by her sister um, before this that you know if anything happens to me, take my daughter and just get out because most likely my husband has done this, and because uh, she kinda, she kind of um, you know was dealing with a rough relationship, and uh, so, so yeah so the the sister takes the daughter and runs to Florida and like hides out, and while she's there she makes friends with. Um, all the people there, and I, I just, I really, really like the setting, like, you know, like, the small motels, and, um, she helps fix things up, and the little girl was really, um, nice, uh, to read about as well, um, just, like, their relationship, and just, like, the, the kind of the humor, and, like, the, like she brings, like, light, like, you know, lightness to the story, that's, I'm like, it, it was, like, a very heavy story, in a way, with, the, um, you know, like, the abusive relationship with the sister and her husband, and then it gets, like, I don't know, serious, in a way, um, well, yeah, in a way, in a way, it does because um, the sister who's on the run, you know, she's hiding out, and so um, there's. A, I I don't I, I, I can't give anything away, but um, yeah, it's like very like kind of like a gruesome, a little bit of a like gruesome, or yeah, dark elements are in play there um, to keep the husband from not finding um, them and to like you know, proving that, you know, they are no longer in the picture. Like, uh, that's all I want to say with that one. But, yeah, it, it was it was a very good story. And, uh, like, America Andrews, I, I don't know, she can do no wrong in my books. Um, I then have Bride's Head Revisited by Evelyn Woe. 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 <laughs> and I buddy read this with Kelly from Books I'm Not Reading. And this is a story of Charles and his friendship. It's, like, lifelong friendship with the Flight family. He first um, meets the son of the family, who um, he, they really like, hit it off in college, but um, the, but so the, yeah, the, the son brings him, it brings him to Brideshead, and he, he makes acquaintances with the mom and dad, and you know, the other sisters and brother, and the family, and they're all very like unique personalities, for sure. Um, the, the friend that he, the son that he um, befriends, really like I don't know goes off the rails in a way and um, really starts heavily drinking and so like they, they um they kind of like unravel their friendship in a way there because um they're really just on two different paths um and meanwhile um Charles is still in contact with the family so yeah it's just like a lifelong story 
um, in a way. But the beginning was really hard to get into. I, I would say that. Um, like the first like two or three chapters were really hard to get into. But once I was like, in it, then I was okay, you know, to keep going with it. And um, I'm happy to have buddy read it with, uh, with Kelly. Um, you know, maybe I would get discouraged if I read the first two chapters. Like, yeah, th what, what is this? Like, it was, um, you know, kind of like boring. You know, it's like strange and out there. But, but yeah, if you keep, keep reading it, 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 it's really good. And I think I would like, like it more if I reread it. Like I was telling Kelly, like um, after we had talked about it, um, yeah, after we had read the book, you know, I, yeah, I think I would get, I would like it more and more as I, reread it like the first week I say like in this middle of the road it was just okay but yeah I think I would like again uh if I read it more <laughs> I, keep repeating, I keep repeating myself um anyway then I have Maggie Steve Otter's um Call Down the Hawk this is the first book in the Dreamer trilogy I reread this because on um, the second book Mr. Impossible uh, came out this month and so this is following um Ronan who is in the Raven Cycle series um by Maggie Steve Otter um and um this is like has a whole totally different tone than that quartet because that one was like really focused on the friendship and them like growing up in um, high school whereas this he is like on his own in a way and he is just learning how to be a dreamer and what all that entails and um so yeah yeah it's like more of like a, like a thriller in a way I would say um but yeah it's always good um, and then have Miss Julia Takes Over by Anne B. Ross. This is book two in the Miss Julia series. And um, I read the first one, as you can see, earlier this month. And so I can immediately, like, I think there's like 10 or so books in the series. Like, so I immediately borrowed the next book from my library when it came back or came around to me. I'm like, okay, I'm going to pick this one up. And so this one, again, the same woman who was um, had been gone missing the, um, the oh, hi, Fable. Um, <laughs> She's like, what are you doing talking? She's, uh, we're going on a walk after this. And so I think she's like, you know, come on now. Let's, <laughs> it's time to go. Um, but the same woman who, um, who was the mistress of, uh, Miss Julia's husband, um, has gone missing again because she goes on this date and doesn't come home one night. And so Miss Julia never liked the boyfriend to begin with. So she automatically suspects him. Like, he is up to no good. I don't like how he dresses, how he looks, how he talks. Yeah, he, he it's all it's all him. <laughs> and so the mystery goes from, from there. Um, I like the first one better than this one. Um, this one was still good. Like, my favorite part in this was um, there is a NASCAR, um, like a famous NASCAR driver and a NASCAR track involved in this story. And so I just was, like, laughing my head off when um, – you know, Julia is like an elderly kind of woman. And so she is racing around this NASCAR track, um, <laughs> escaping the bad guys, which was, and putting like a pedal to the metal, um, <laughs> which was, which is really, um, fun to read about and to see. Um, but yeah, those are all the books I read in May, except for that first week, <laughs> like I was saying, which I don't know. It was really weird. I should just do like, if I'm not going to do weekly, I need to do like bi-weekly, something so it's not so out of whack here. But, um, let me know if you've read any of these books and I will talk to you soon. Thanks, book too.